<coughs> okay. So, we have already discussed the mean value theorem, various type of mean value theorem, uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem, Rose theorem, then generalized mean value theorem that is Cauchy mean value theorem and also the few applications of the derivatives. And the most interesting application which we have discussed is the monotonic character of the function just by looking the sign of the derivatives. Okay? And we have seen if over the interval derivative is greater than 0 positive, greater than equal to 0, then the function will be greater than equal to 0, then function is monotonic increasing function. If it is less than equal to 0, the function is a monotonic decreasing function. So, in this lecture, we will give few more applications of the derivatives as well as our mean value theorems. Okay. Uh, with the help of the sign of the derivative near a point x in some neighborhood of the x, one can identify whether the point correspond to a maximum point, relative maximum point, relative minimum point or maybe none of them. So, this is the criteria a sufficient sufficient uh, in fact, the uh, a sufficient condition condition for a function to have a relative relative extremum that is local local extremum extremum at an interior point at an interior point of an interval these are the sufficient condition of course uh, the result says uh, which is also known as the first derivative test for extima. Let f be continuous, 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 let f be continuous on an interval, on the interval say i, which is a closed and bounded interval and let C be an interior point, interior point of the interval i. Assume that, that f is differentiable, differentiable on a c open interval a c and open interval c b. Then the result says uh, if there is if there is a neighborhood neighborhood say c minus delta to c plus delta contained in i such that the derivative of the function f that is f prime x is greater than equal to 0 non negative for c minus delta less than x less than c means towards the left of this is uh, get positive non negative and uh, f prime x is less than equal to 0 non positive for the c uh, in right hand side of the interval that is c less than x less than c plus delta then then the function f has a relative or we also use the word local maximum at c the second part is also parallel says 
if there is if there is a neighborhood there is a neighborhood c minus delta c plus delta in i such that the derivative of the function f is non positive for the left hand side interval c minus delta less than c and non negative in the right hand side of interval of c that is c my a less than x less than c plus delta then f h f h a relative a relative or local we can say local minima uh, minimum at c so before going to the proof let us see the geometrically what do suppose we have two cases one is this say c is this interval okay uh, now a function is suppose is this suppose this is the function okay fx now what the property says uh, f be a continuous function on the interval ab suppose this is the interval ab where the function is continuous continuous on the inter and let c be an integer point in of the interval ab and assume that function f is also differentiable on this c means uh, this interval a ac and cb the function is differentiable about c we are not talking right now okay so in this the function is differentiable in this function is differentiable the function is throughout over the closed interval is uh, uh, continuous and then what he says is if there is a neighborhood if there is a neighborhood around the point uh, around the point uh, say c c minus delta c plus delta this is the c minus delta it is c plus delta so in this neighborhood if the function behaves like this okay, if the derivative of the function at this derivative of the function at this point is non negative while the derivative of this function at this point is non positive then the point c will correspond to the maximum point let us see why so if the curve is like this this is our curve okay now if we look this suppose i take a point here x point okay this is our x now if we look this here the derivative means slope f prime x this is the denote the slope of the function at the point x on this so if f prime x is greater than equal to 0 so slope will be positive it means it makes an acute angle with the axis of x now when in this interval if i choose in this interval if i take a point here then correspondingly the tangent if i draw at this point the tangent will be something like this the slope becomes obtuse that is the derivative a prime x is less than or equal to 0 so it means if nearby x c if nearby c the tangent changes its uh, behavior from positive to negative that is if it is keep on coming here and then as soon as it reaches to a point where it has a local maximum it has a change and the direction is changed is it not? and this change point the point where it changes its direction will correspond to the point of maximum the same case happens in uh, second part if we have say suppose we have this curve and here is this a b and we have this point c so let us take a neighborhood c minus delta c plus delta when you picked up the point below in the left hand side of this and draw the tangent that f prime x here is negative here uh, this was positive and here it was negative 
f prime x is negative less than equal to 0 means non positive here this is non positive and then when it, it goes to here it is positive. So, here the f prime x is greater than 0 it means the tangent again changes time from negative slope changes the direction as soon as it crosses the point uh, on the curve corresponding to c and this point will correspond to the minimum point. So, it is a local minima for this. So, geometrically we can explain these uh, things and uh, let us see the proof uh, analytical also we can uh, prove it that in case of 1 it is a local maxima while in case of the 2 it is a local minima. Okay. So, let us see the proof of it. <laughs> if first we prove a part let if x belongs to the interval say c minus delta c in the left hand side. So, this is the figure 1 figure 1 okay, in this then by mean value theorem by mean value theorem there exist by mean value theorem there exist a point exist a point say c x in the interval x c where x lies between uh, the where x belongs to this means x lies between c minus delta less than this less than. So, I am choosing the interval c x, uh, uh, x c and applying the mean value theorem. So, there exist a point c x in this interval such that such that the f of c minus f of x is equal to the derivative of the function at a point c x into c minus x. Okay, this one. Now, since our let it be 1, since it is given over this side a prime x is positive a prime x as c x this is c x is greater than or equal to 0 it is given. Now, c is already greater uh, c is greater than x because of this interval. So, the right hand side right hand side is positive greater than all equal to 0 therefore, left hand side has to be positive. So, this implies this is only possible when f of x f of x is less than equal to f c okay. for all x belongs to the interval c minus delta to c clear it means in this neighborhood the function uh, f attains the maximum value at c. So, in the left side in the left of the c and in, in the left of c the function f attains maximum value at c at c local maximum value you can say local because we are choosing only the neighborhood around this. Now, on the other end if I take this uh, say x for x belonging to c 2 c plus delta and again apply the mean value theorem then what we get we get the uh, x there exists some x mean value theorem uh, over this uh, 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 same. So, by mean value theorem we can say with f of x is less than equal to f c for by mean value theorem and in a similar way and on the same lines lines of uh, edge used earlier proof means there exists a c x lying between the say c min x comma x where this uh, will lie. So, for o we can say this is less than equal to this for x belonging to c minus delta 2 c plus delta follow ok follow and this is to sorry this is c, c 2 c plus delta for all x c 2 c plus delta. Therefore, 1 and 2 will gives that implies the f x is less than equal to f c for all x belonging to c minus delta 
2 c plus delta and that is sufficient to prove f has a relative maximum or local we can say maximum at the point c at c this proof the proof for the part follow similar proof is similar so we just derive it okay so that gives the that. now the converse of this is not true remark because what we have seen is we have assuming the derivative is non negative uh, in the left hand side and non positive in the right hand side then there is a maximum here in this case non negative here and positive non positive here here it is a non positive and non negative then minimum but if i think uh, say the converse part of it Dolbeck's theorem. Suppose f has a maximum at the point c, then this uh, or minimum at the point c, then we can can be derived so that the function will change its, its behavior from positive to negative. So, that converse is not in general true. The converse is not true in general okay for example huh. say suppose i take the function fx which is equal to say uh, let f is a function f is a function from r to r be defined be defined by f x is equal to 2 x to the power 4 plus x to the power 4 sin 1 by x for x not equal to 0 and and f of 0 equal to 0. Okay. Then clearly this function uh, then this function clearly what uh, when x is different from 0 the derivative of the function will be 8 x cube plus 4 x cube sin 1 by x and then minus x square cos 1 by uh, sin cos plus and then minus 1 by so it is minus time sorry. So, it will be the minus of x because sin is cos 1 by x and 1 by x minus 1 by x square. So, that is why minus sin is there and when x is equal to 0 the derivative of this function f prime 0 is limit f x minus f 0 over x minus 0 when x tends to 0 and this comes out to be what when you divide by this you are getting limit x tends to 0 to x cube plus x cube sin 1 by x and this is dominated by x cube and this is also the total limit comes out to be 0. It means the function f. So, f a f is differentiable f is uh, differentiable um, differentiable uh, throughout the neighborhood of 0 in some neighborhood of 0 or in any neighborhood in every neighborhood of uh, uh, differentiable in every neighborhood of 0 in every neighborhood of 0, but we will show that, but this function, uh, but we will show that the derivative of this function that the derivative of this function that is f prime x f prime x has both positive and negative values and negative values negative values of 
in every neighborhood of 0. Uh, one more thing let me just clear it. Uh, the function is defined by this. The function clearly x equal to 0 is the minimum value of the function f x which is 2 x 4 plus x 4 sin 1 by x for x is not equal to 0 and 0 for x equal to 0. Whatever the x you choose, this will be always a positive quantity. Why? Because so it is x equal to 0 is basically an absolute minimum value, absolute minimum. The reason is because f of x will always be greater than 0 if x is different from 0. The reason is the sign x to the power 4 sin 1 by x, x to the power 4 sin 1 by x, this is bounded by minus x to the power 4 and plus x to the power 4, this sign will be there. Now, 2 x 4 when we added both side, then x 4 is a positive quantity, therefore, the function f x will always be greater than or equal to 0, 0 at the point 0. So, it is 0 for all x belongs to R. So, 0 is the point which is the minimum point for this function and so what we wanted to show this function is something uh, at the point 0 it is 0 and rest of this I do not know what type of this function is it will go something like this ok. Uh, maybe x 4 dominated something. So, a curve will be there ok a curve may be like this something. Now, this point 0 is the point where it attains the absolute minimum value, but what it says is that this curve this is not correct. What we wanted to show that is derivatives ok sorry is ok. Derivative will have both positive and negative value in this inter it means though it has a minimum value at the point 0, but according to the previous result the result was which we have shown is this that if the derivative is non negative then the left hand side interval it is non negative and right hand side interval it is uh, non positive if it has a maximum and when it is a minimum point then left hand side derivative it is all the values will be greater than equal to 0 and for the left hand side right hand side it will be less than uh, say less than 0 and right hand side it will be greater than equal to 0. But here in this case we are unable to get any interval whether uh, in which the left hand side all the functional values are less than equal to 0 and right hand side the derivative of this is greater than equal to 0 the reason is <laughs> like this. So, this follows from here if we take the say point suppose I uh, suppose I take x which is equal to 1 over 2 n pi n is greater than 2 ok. Then what happens this the function f derivative of this function the derivative is defined like this this derivative f prime x at this point at this point. So, this is positive now this will be since it is 2 n pi this will be 0 this will be 0 and here it will be something uh, negative is it not. So, when we take n greater than 2 so it becomes what 4 4 into pi becomes more than 8 in fact. So, we get this value negative. So, here we are getting to be negative and in fact this is uh, uh, we can show this thing is that this is negative for n greater than equal to 2 and positive. So, it is negative for n greater than equal to 2 while if I take x equal to 1 upon 4 n plus 1 pi by 2 for n greater than 1 then what happens the derivative f prime a x 
derivative f prime x this is the derivative f prime x. So, when you take this term this of course, it will not affect this value will be 0 odd multiply. So, it is positive always. So, it is always be greater than 0. So, <laughs> in the same this sequence belongs to the same intervals 2 n pi n then the right hand side of this. So, we are getting the right hand interval where the derivative is having both positive and negative values. Therefore, it uh, contradicts our uh, that uh, converse is not true in fact. In, so, this shows ok. So, that is an interesting example which we discuss it ok. Now, let us come to the other applications of mean value theorem. So, first is the Rolle's theorem with the help of Rolle's theorem one can one can find or one can find the location of uh, location of roots of a function of a function. For example, for example, for if a function, if a function, the reason is because sorry, because if a function g can be identified, can be identified as the derivative of as the derivative of a another function f then between uh, then between any two roots any two roots of f there there is a there is at least there is at least there is at least there is at least one root of g because what the rolle's theorem says if a function f uh, uh, g between any two roots of f j okay if a function f such that f of this is interval a b f of a equal to say f of b this is b ok this is b. So, this is the function f if the function f is say continuous over the closed interval a b and differentiable over the open interval a b and at the point a both f a and f b is 0 then there exist a point c in between where the derivative of the function f prime c is 0. It means if I say g is a function which is equivalent to its derivative. So, between any two roots of a b uh, function f there is a root of g because this is equivalent to g c. So, that is what it. for example, if we look the function f x which is say sin x ok. Then let alpha and beta be the two roots be the two roots of this function sin x the sin over the interval say any interval I take say uh, between the interval say minus uh, say a to b just a to b ok or let us take the exact root because this uh, uh, sin become 0 is 0 sin pi is 0. So, between minus uh, say uh, over the interval minus pi by 2 2 pi by 2 let us take this interval ok uh, pi by 2 minus pi by 2 it will not help because one will be 0 other net. So, do not take it let us take the interval say minus pi 2 pi let us take this interval ok. So, this is the function sin 0 is 0 sin pi then minus pi. So, pi so, the function f is such which is continuous and differentiable over this interval. Now, there exists at least one root 
obviously this is one of the point where the derivative vanishes and here this is another point where the derivative vanishes. So, what is the derivative f prime x? The f prime x is cos x. So, cos x vanishes at the pi by 2 and then minus pi by 2. So, it shows that between any two roots of the sin x there is a root of cos x and vice versa also if I start with cos x then its derivative is sin x minus sin h of 4 then again between any two roots of cos x there is a root of sin. So, one can locate the ro ro roots uh, of the function with the help of Roche theorem. The second um, we can also use the mean value theorem. to approximate or for the approximation for the approximation of the uh, roots for the approximation of some num say approximate calculation you can say for approximate calculation. Let us see how suppose we wanted to find to evaluate uh, this evaluate under root say 105. Okay. Now, if I look this take the interval suppose uh, 100 to 105 okay. and the function f x if I take to root x then apply the Lagrange's mean value theorem. is mean value theorem. What we get is f of 100 5 minus f of 100 is equal to the derivative of this function at some point c into the length of the interval 105 minus 100. 105 minus 100 where c lies between 100 and 100 5 where c is this. So, what is this is this is equal to 100 5 minus 100 this is equal to 1 by 2 root c into 5. So, 5 by root 2 we can approximate roots 2 now. So, since our c lies between 100 and 105. So, root c will lies between 10 and under root 105 this is almost approximately or less than say 11 uh, less than 11 ok. So, it means this value. So, what we get therefore, under root 5 105 minus 10 will lie between these two bond the bond will be 5 over 2 into 11 and 5 over 2 into 10. Okay. Therefore, the root 105 will lie between this 10 plus 5 by 22 and less than uh, uh, less than 10 uh, this is 10. So, minus 10 minus 10 here because this will go from here and this will come. So, 105 with this and this <coughs> minus uh, say 10 plus both sides. So, this is 10 only and then it will be 5 over uh, 10 plus 5 over 20. Now, this is an approximate value for this. So, one can get the value accordingly. Okay. So, this is another application of this. Then inequalities can also be established with the help of this the inequality is suppose I want to establish uh, so that e to the power say x is always be greater than equal to 1 plus x for x belongs to r. Okay. Now, uh, we know that e to the power x is always be greater than uh, its positive quantity is always be positive quantity when x belongs to r is it not work 1 plus x all f x is negative 1 by x and, and its derivatives and its derivative f prime x is e to the power x itself. So, f prime x will always be greater than 1 when x is greater than 0 
n is less than 1 if x is less than 0 because it is 1 upon e to the power x and for the x equal to 0 it is 1. Okay? So, 1 occurs if 1 clear. So, this will be the solution for now to establish this result consider the interval consider the interval say uh, we take the interval 0 and x this close interval and choose the f x as e to the power x. <coughs> now, this function is continuous differentiable in the interval inside the interval a 0 x. So, by the mean value theorem Lagrange's mean value theorem the value of the function at the end point is equal to the derivative of the function x at the point x equal to c into the length of the interval x c. So, we get what e to the power x minus 1 is equal to e to the power c into x where c lies between what c lies between 0 and x c is greater than 0. So, e to the power c will be greater than 1. So, it is greater than all equal to x at the most 0 when c is uh, uh, equal to 0 it is 1. So, it is x. So, this shows e to the power x is greater than equal to 1 plus x for every x belongs to R positive. Now, similarly we can show for x belongs to R negative it is 2 greater than equal to this hence for all R it is 2. So, this can be shown. So, this also inequality we can use it mean uh, very theorem. Now, there are certain Dalvik's theorem being required the Dalvik's theorem. Okay. So, in order to prove the Dalvik's theorem we first need this lemma P prove we can skip because proof. let r i which is subset of r be an interval and let f is a mapping from i to r let c is a point in i and assume that f has derivative has a derivative derivative at c then this lemma says if derivative of a function at the point c is strictly greater than 0, then there is a number delta greater than 0 such that such that f of x is greater than f of c for x belonging to i such that it lies in the right hand side of the interval of the inter neighborhood of c and if if a prime x c is negative then there is a there is a number delta greater than 0 such that f of x f of x will be greater than f c for x x belongs to i such that c minus delta less than x less than c. So, what this it says is suppose f is a function and c i is an interval c is a point belonging to this and function has a derivative at this point. Now, if the derivative is strictly greater than 0 then what he says is we can always find a right hand side neighborhood of this uh, uh, c where the function will have a positive value where the function f x will be always be greater than the value at the point c. So, here in this interval the function f x will always exceed the value at the point c. It means that f of c will behave at the lowest point in this interval if derivative is positive and if this uh, f of x is all and if derivative is negative 
then in the left hand side of this neighborhood the value of the function will always be positive if here. So, here if the derivative is negative at the point c, if the derivative at a point c is negative then we can get this in neighborhood left hand where the function is exceeding the value of c. If derivative comes out to be positive at the point c then we get the right hand side interval where the functional value exceed the value at the point c. So, using this lemma uh, we can prove the Dahlbeck's result. In fact, the proof of this is very simple uh, since the derivative exists since this derivative a prime c exists which is the limit of this f x minus f c over x minus c this exists and it is given to be say greater than 0. Now, when the limit greater than 0 x tends to c then obviously, this entire thing must be positive. So, this is only possible when limit is strictly greater than 0 it is only possible when the this quotient should be greater than 0 otherwise if it is negative we cannot get the limit to be strictly greater than 0. But x is if I choose x in the interval for uh, uh, so there exist in p this is greater than 0 in some neighborhood 0 less than x less than mod x minus c less than delta. Okay. So, means there exist uh, if it is greater than 0 then there exist a delta greater than 0 such that if x belongs to i interval and and 0 less than mod x minus c less than delta then this holds. Okay. So, if x satisfy the condition if x belongs to i and satisfy the condition x is greater than c then from here we get implies. So, f x must be greater than f of c otherwise this will be negative. So, that proves the result for the first part similarly for the other. Okay. So, this we can see now Dalbeck's theorem which is Dalbeck's theorem. Basically, what is the Dalbeck's theorem is? Uh, it states is it states that if a function if a function f is differentiable function f is differentiable at every at every point of an interval say i then then the function f prime that is the derivative of this function f prime has the intermediate value a has the intermediate <coughs> mediate value property. It means that is the meaning of this is that is if f dash takes if f dash takes on values a and b a and b then if it then it also takes it also takes on takes on all values between a and b <coughs> a and b okay so this is our so exact statement is we can see exact statement is if f is differentiable on the interval i as close and bounded interval i and if k is a number 
kg number between f prime a and f prime b then there is at least one point c in the interval a b such that the derivative of the function at the c is k. It means if f is differentiable throughout this means derivative of the function exists including the derivative at the end points. Then if I picked up any arbitrary num any number which lies between f dash a and f dash b then there will be a some point where the derivative of the function at that point will coincide the numbers k. So, it can attain all the values in between a and b which is taken by this ok. So, means the maximum and minimum value ok. So, proof is like this. Suppose that k lies between suppose k lies between f prime a and f prime b ok. Now, we define the function g on i by g x equal to k x minus f x for x belonging to i. Let us define this. Now, since function f is continuous and differentiable, so g is also continuous and differentiable. So, since f is continuous on the closed and bounded interval, this is closed and bounded interval. So, this shows g is also continuous on the closed and bounded interval. So, if it is continuous on a closed and bounded interval, then it will attain its maximum value on the interval. So, then g will attain its maximum value similarly minimum value also maximum or minimum value maximum and minimum value of course uh, on i. So, here we recall the maximum and minimum when this is less than ok. So, we get the i. Now, since our derivative g prime a uh, that is by definition is coming to be what k minus f prime a this is by just differentiated and this g prime a is positive why because our choosing k lies between f prime a and f prime b. So, this is positive this is positive. Now, it follows from the previous lemma. So, by the previous lemma what he says if the derivative is positive then there will be a one neighborhood is it not. So, if the derivative is positive then there is a number delta such that in the right hand side of this neighborhood the function f x will be greater than this. So, we get from by the from the previous lemma we can say that the maximum of g uh, by the there exists a right hand side neighborhood say uh, a to a uh, uh, we can say a to a plus delta such that the derivative the functional value g of x uh, g of x is greater than g of a. Therefore, the function g cannot attain the maximum value at the point a. So, therefore, the maximum value maximum of g does not occur does not occur at the point x equal to a because it already violate if it is maximum it must be g x must be less than equal to g a which is not true not occur. Similarly, similarly uh, since since g dash of b that is equal to k minus f prime b is negative. So, again by previous lemma 
again there is a left hand uh, side you know, where the value will be greater than the uh, less than this. So, again this shows that g by the previous lemma that maximum does not occur that maximum does not occur maximum does not occur at x equal to b. So, neither it occurs at x equal to a nor at x equal to b. Therefore, but maximum should be attained because it is uh, continuous over the closed and bounded interval. Therefore, g will attain g attains its maximum value maximum at some interval at some point at some point c which lies in the interval a b. Okay. Now, again a function g is such which uh, has a derivative and maximum is attained at some point. So, according to the um, theorem according to previous uh, uh, we have discussed is uh, according to the theorems earlier earlier we have seen that there exist a point we have 0 which is less than equal to g dash c which is k minus a prime c and hence f prime c is k. According to the theorem, this theorem I am putting a star and this is star is uh, we can say uh, this theorem is there. Uh, the theorem says uh, which is interior theorem is that let c be an interior point of the interval uh, i uh, interior point and then at which the function has a relative x minus at which f has relative relative extremum extremum then if the derivative if the derivative of the function at this point c exist then the value of this must be zero this was the result which we have already proved so using this result we get this therefore this complete okay so, thank you very much. We have not covered the L splitters. Next lecture we will do it. Thank you very much.